God. The reason I called in, this is kind of geared to Craig because um, I've been listening. Craig has been talking about, you know, let's expand the playoffs um, to get more teams a chance to win um, and more parity. But now everybody's talking about, well, let's get rid of divisions so that way the top two teams play each other. And a lot of times you're going to get rematches, which everybody says they hate rematches. And you're going to cut out a team like Missouri back in, I think it was 13 and 14. They made the SEC championship. And if they would have upset Alabama at a 9-3 and three record, they would have won the SEC and it would have gave them a chance. Uh, Jeff, I would I would stop short of saying everybody hates rematches. We saw one of the Big 12. We've seen one of the Big 12 championship every year since they brought it back, and, and most of them have been good. So uh, I don't I don't think it's necessarily bad. I I don't think people want what happened in the Pac-12 where you have back to back weeks of playing the same team. You also can't really prevent that in so that, many but, ways, especially if you yeah. don't have divisions. Um, and I don't know that I've I've really been advocating so much for the playoffs to expand to give everybody a chance. I guess I guess maybe I have kind of been on that that boat a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just I think in general it would be great to have more teams in the playoff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that right now you can see it's very much a country club, and we've seen the TCU's and the Baylor's try to approach. Like Cincinnati finally broke through, but we know how difficult. Like a lot of things had to happen for for that to happen, including them obviously winning games. But no, you're right. I mean, I have seen that that Missouri team. You know, in if they win the SEC championship, they're probably you know they're not getting into a playoff in its current state, but an expanded playoff they would have. And without divisions, they still were the second best team that year. Uh, I remember looking at that uh, a couple of days ago, unless I read that incorrectly, uh, because I, what I thought about when looking at that game in particular was uh, for those making the argument that, oh, well, now this would eliminate a Missouri, like that team, from being able to even have an opportunity. Uh, but I think that year, actually, they still would have been that team, even if there was no East and West division. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe they would have lost a tiebreaker, but they had the second best record uh, that year. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's like anything else. There's there's no perfect solution. I do, though, think that, that, I mean, yes, if you have eight teams, that just gives more room for Ohio State and Michigan to make the playoff or three SEC teams to make the playoff. And so that's why it's really important of what the guidelines are for said expanded playoff. And that's why you see so many conferences fighting for that automatic bid and then others pushing back against it. But, I mean, there's no other way to gain more access than to have more spots available, right? Yeah. I mean, the way it is right now, you basically have no chance if you're not one of a a select few teams. And if you double the field... Well, at least that gives maybe one or two teams a year that otherwise might not have that opportunity, that opportunity. Um, you know, Baylor could have been a playoff team this year if they would, if it was an eight-team playoff after the run that they went on. They probably would have been a playoff team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I, I see where you're coming from. It, it's certainly an expanded playoff doesn't solve everything, and it doesn't have its own set of problems. Uh, you know, the ninth team will be pissed. The tenth team will be pissed. If you go to 16, 17 team will be pissed. So it's... It's never going to be make everyone happy, uh, but yeah, you're right. There, I mean, there are some downsides to no conference uh, championship uh, regulations as far as the divisions go, but I also think there will be some good things that sprout from it as well. Yeah, I don't think the 12 team playoff is a cure all. I'm very much in favor of it because I think it's a cure a lot. Like it can cure a lot of things that uh, have have played college football. Uh, and look, we've had Tim Brando on the show many times, and and he's got he makes a great point of that. College football lets December go and then expects people to just all, yep. especially the casual fan. Look, television is not just about the diehards. The diehards are going to go wherever they go. You know, uh, just like any kind of band, like, you know, name a, name a random band from the 80s. They still, you know, can put Rat. on a concert. Yeah, Rat. <laughs> Rat could put on a concert at the backyard and they're going to sell it out here at the backyard. But could a Rat, uh, you know, sell out Dickies Arena in Fort Worth? No, they can't. I don't so, know. <laughs> like, Maybe I don't. Know. I've never, I don't know why they even popped into my head. Yeah, it was but, like an '80s band, yeah. but but yeah, you know, but you get my point. It's yeah. like they're always going to have the diehard following. The diehards are going to go, no matter what a lot of diehards say. They're going to go wherever they're supposed to go. Well, I think and, I think with college football, they're going to have their built-in ratings. They're always going to have because the Ohio States and the UTs and the Oklahomas are not going anywhere. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to get to another level, then, I, yeah, I do think you have to have that outside interest that doesn't come from your hardcore Crimson Tide fan or your hardcore 
Baylor Bear fan or Longhorn fan, you need the Horn Frogs fans to feel like every, just, we got a chance. If we win enough games and things go our way, we've got a chance to at least play for a title. And even if you know you're not going to go two rounds deep and then fall to Bama, like at least you got the opportunity. Cincinnati didn't win a playoff game last year, but did Cincinnati gain uh, exponentially from just the opportunity to play in that game and, and learn a lot in the process? Yeah, I think that they did. I think it was beneficial for them ultimately. And so uh, I think just having more teams with that opportunity would be beneficial for programs that otherwise aren't going to be able to, to keep up in a limited field that's pretty much reserved for those who already have every advantage known to man already. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I come from on the I'm, – and I'm not for, like, Leach's solution, you know, everybody gets in and all that. It should be an exclusive club, but if you – you know, if you're basically just banning – conferences from even having an opportunity to get in even if you do know like what the results would ultimately be you know he should say that there is a Boise State being in Oklahoma every once in a while and what's wrong with that I don't think there's anything wrong with that I think it's great and it, it certainly changed fortunes well, for Boise State well look uh the, the best win in UCS history uh, to the point was them beating Baylor in yep. the Fiesta Bowl and really I mean look I know that Blake Bortles was a top pick and the uh Perriman the receiver was there but they like Based on what had happened in the regular season, Baylor should have blown them out. Baylor should have beat them. And they had no business being on that field with Baylor. But that stuff does happen. And Baylor lost not just because of, uh, you know, it wasn't a talent thing. It was there were outside factors that affected a game. You right, know, yeah. so the coaches. So, yeah. Rumor to go to the arrival down the road. Yeah. What if Cincinnati <laughs> happens to catch Alabama when everybody finds out Nick Saban's about to retire? Yeah. It's a distraction. You know, they have a whole week of that. You know, so there's all these things that can happen that can make a team that's better than you not play well. That's being human in sports. So but he's right, though. I mean, there are downsides yeah. to not having divisions. I mean, there, yeah. there absolutely are. And, and like that, you know, example, I mean, Missouri that particular year, again, I do believe they would have been in that title game regardless. But in, in many other years, yeah, I mean, you're not getting in. I'll, I'll just give you the better example is the ACC, where many years the best team is by far the best team, and the second best team is three games behind them. And then you run the risk of uh, hurting your best chance at a national title by their one bad night being, uh, you know, a, a half empty stadium in Charlotte in December. Yeah, yeah. and we know too in, uh, in the Big Ten, there's, there's more often than not, uh, you know, teams that are not the top two teams that are playing for that title because of just the, the division uh, differences. Uh, but, yeah, again, um, I just love hearing people's opinions. I appreciate you chiming in. Good to hear you. And uh, hopefully hear from you again here pretty soon. But uh, there's no perfect solution. Uh, I do think, though, more access is better overall for other programs. Now, while uh, some people may not care about those other programs because they're fans of the programs that are in the club already, I can understand that. But as a college football fan who does – uh, who is a fan of one of those said programs, I still want to see, because I've you know seen how it affects a Baylor or a TCU, I, I still want to see, see those teams feel like when they have that magical type of run, that magical type of year, that they too can have that opportunity. And I know that might be daydreaming and they really stand no chance or whatever, but I don't know, man. Like There's a few of these teams that have been argued for the playoff that I think would have been really damn interesting to see Art Bryles and Baylor's offense versus... Yeah. Saban in Alabama's defense. Like, it may have been an ass kick in one way or the other, but I would have loved to have seen that. But we didn't get to see it, and instead we had to see Alabama play, you hey, know, another team that's we just... We could have right. potentially seen... Uh, Oregon and Baylor that year. That would have been incredible. TCU's team with uh, with yeah. Boykin I mean, yeah. in that year, they were fantastic. They would have been electrifying to see them in a playoff scenario and see how that style would have matched up with, with some of the other teams around the country. So I'm just a fan of college football. I'm rooting for more of it, not less of it. I'm not going crazy like Leach with the 64 team March Madness field because that's just ridiculous on so many different levels. But uh, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned, even if every once in a while it results in an ass kicking. But guess what? How many of these playoff games that resulted in an ass kicking anyways even with the blue bloods plenty yeah. of them yep all right let's